My name is Major Michael Abb. I'm a former uh, operations officer for all strategic army counterintelligence. I've done uh, joint operations uh, and many, many other things, uh, special ops. But on April 22nd, uh, USA Today reported that a uh, KRI Nangala 402 sub is one of five, only five, operated by the Indonesian Navy. It was built in 1977 by Howell Schurk Deutsche Versch, a German company. Indonesia bought it in 1981. Officials say air supply of missing submarine would last only until Saturday. A search team spots high magnetic force, the depth of 50 to 100 meters. It would be a frontline news story for a week as curious viewers were wrapped in suspense like the little boy trapped in the well, hoping, praying that the 53 sailors lost at sea might be found and rescue vessels and aircraft were dispatched from even the United States in what became an international rescue mission. But as the days passed and the oxygen projected to last until only that Saturday was certainly depleting, a last ditch effort was still yet made in the final hours to avert the news of what seemed certain by that point to be inevitable. And days later, a video of the sailors singing a farewell song was released by the Indonesian government without a reference even to the date or time that the video was actually recorded. Visitors to Charleston, South Carolina may have an opportunity to view a salvage submarine from the Civil War or war between the states or war of northern aggression depending entirely upon one's point of view and recall those sailors who suffered a similar tragic fate on what was essentially a type of spy mission but where a malfunction failed to cleanse the toxic buildup of carbon dioxide gas causing that early subsurface battleship to descend to the floor of the waters off Charleston sealing the dead sailors inside. But most read, hear, or view a news story in their contemporary times, perhaps fed to them by their news feed, with no historical reference, and probably few would even recall that between 1963 and 1966, and a Cold War, the Indonesian government had fiercely opposed the creation of the nation of Malaysia. And if what was no, as the Borneo confrontation, lost perhaps in the muddle of memories of an American involvement in the jungles of Southeast Asia, very few may recall at all why a KRI Nangala submarine might raise some interest today, especially since that was back in the 1960s, and the most recent incident involved a submarine built in Germany in 1977, which then, at that time, 1977, was still divided into two parts. Purchased by Indonesia in 1981, before the fall of the wall, and retrofitted in 2014. Retrofits occur all the time, especially for some nations not able to produce a warship on their own. Even if a retrofit itself is a great expenditure for a poor nation. And those who may have caught a story in popular science last year about naval warships may even have caught the story about the very first Chinese aircraft carrier that had been purchased as a salvage from the former Soviets in 1998 by billionaires in China who undertook a retrofit on that warship that took over a decade to retrofit, launching for the first time in 2014 as the first aircraft carrier for the People's Liberation Navy. A billion people and they had only one aircraft carrier and it was not until December 2019 while a pneumonia of unknown etiology validated less than 5% infectious pathogen was emerging in Wuhan being attributed to a zoonotic evolution at a wholesale seafood market in a large city where a military grade virologic institute just happened also to be located but dismissed immediately as a cause because it had to be a zoonotic evolution for some reason. So it would not be surprising if there were actually some history buffs that do not recall that around 1963 to 1964, KRNI Nagala submarine type, a vessel that had been purchased from the former Soviet Union, had used the dumping of trash, which included 10 cans 
to obscure the image on the surveillance radar of their enemies by a merchant vessel to avoid early detection to perform surveillance against the largest naval base in Australia, not far from Perth, a base that U.S. forces used because of its value, strategic value, in the Sino Pacific. These submarines had been conducting surveillance in Australian waters for some time, would always trigger sensors that were deployed by the Australian Navy, a U.S. ally in the Sino Pacific, but had been permitted before this incident to proceed unopposed. And this international controversy mainly created tensions between the superpowers because of its bold attempt to essentially probe near a very high value target, strategic value target, on behalf of their sponsors in the Soviet bloc nations. And today, what might be missed in a motion evoking videos about sailors singing farewell is the fact that the nation of Indonesia is a strong trade partner with the Beijing government, a relationship that has been growing even fonder for over a decade. But according to reports, at around 0300 hours on the fateful evening or 3 o'clock in the morning in civilian terms, under cover of darkness, at which time this vessel purportedly on a training exercise had requested permission to dive. Anyone in the military knows that a commander of a warship cannot just travel anywhere he wishes. And even the USS Theodore Roosevelt, under the command of Captain Brett Crozier, had departed San Diego on orders to deploy for participation in the Pacific Rim Naval Warfare Games, and only there received follow-on orders to set sail for Da Nang, Vietnam, where the crew experienced what many have described as their first exposure to a novel coronavirus, where before their arrival there had only been one or two reported cases. But there, approximately 35 sailors who had stayed in the hotel were some British uh, tourists uh, were laboratory confirmed, uh, were identified, uh, but all of them who were at that particular hotel eventually cleared infection after court or cleared of infection after quarantine while on orders to set sail for the territorial island of Guam where another great headline story began. But if this vessel, the submarine, had been operating in a training exercise, one of the first questions might be with whom was this modern KRI Nangala submarine and its 53 sailors playing a naval battle game with? It just appears rather odd for a submarine to be playing war games all by itself. And it has been reported that after diving around 0300 hours, at 0400 hours, the crew commenced while still apparently below the surface uh, at a depth that they needed permission to request. What has been described as a torpedo drill, an activity that might be normal in a training exercise in such war games, opposing forces in submarines often attempt to engage targets on the surface, as well as engage in more difficult torpedo battles below the surface, where there are only seconds to either identify, detect, or defend against an attack, relying solely upon radar to determine the target, its constant true bearing, its speed, when a beam, its relative bearing, its submarine track, distance to the track to calculate the targeting solution and deliver at least one torpedo, electric, gas, or even rocket power, down the throat, permitting it to dive slightly after launch so as to prevent the submarine from becoming entangled in the initial uh, wire guidance system prior to arming and entry into the kill box to search for targets. Contact, approach, and attack are all familiar phases to those experienced in subsurface warfare, as well as accidentally going into the kill box and making yourself a target of your own torpedo. But may be new term for those who only know about submarines from movies like Crimson Tide, Hunt for Red October, Das Boot, or the classic The Bedford Incident. And modern naval warfare has greatly enhanced the capabilities of these subsurface munitions that in the present arsenal of the United States warships 
may only achieve top speeds of 30 to 40 knots or nautical miles per hour far exceeding the speed of most surface battleships that generally may top out at only 20 knots while both the Iranians and the Soviets have been experimenting with what are described as supercabitating torpedoes that use gas jets to create bubbles around the torpedo to reduce their drag in the water, which increases with depth, believe it or not, at which the armament is deployed. And against surface targets using the periscope, up periscope to range targets by focusing on the mass of a surface vessel, modern torpedoes may engage targets at up to seven or even 10 kilometers away. But if the Indonesian submarine with the poignantly singing sailors singing farewell was requesting permission to dive during an exercise with no other vessels in its close vicinity to a depth below approximately 60 meters or periscope, periscope depth, apparently it was their intention to practice engaging targets below the surface, reaching their targeting depth out to as far as 10 kilometers away perhaps, and prepare to engage in a simulated battle one hour after diving in their retrofitted former Soviet submarine, but currently a strong trade partner with the communist regime in Beijing. But for one reason or another, even 12 hours after requesting permission to dive, even when an oil spill was detected during this war game training exercise, not even their own Navy was the least bit concerned about the courage of this fearless crew or that the minnow might be lost. And in the military, unless you are engaged in covert operations, in a military where you actually have to request authorization to dive to conduct a routine training torpedo firing exercise, a half a day is a very, very long time to go AWOL without raising any alarm. This briefing was unclassified. My name is Major Mike Webb, and by God, I am running for Arlington Public School Board. Honest. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.